out here for an entire week in unfavorable conditions, um, sometimes multiple days with no sleep, uh, very little um, food and water, and they did their job. They were professional the whole time, and I just can't say how proud I am of them. Can you tell us how this one this went down? Did he surrender? Did you have to run after him? What happened? So j just to give you a little background, as, as you know, Throughout the week, we have been building and building, and we have we've maintained the same strategy: is you identify where he is, and then you set up a perimeter, a tight perimeter, and then you go into that perimeter and you, you apprehend him. Um, uh, Mr. Terry was extremely fast, agile, um, and of course, you know it, it's. I think it, it adds to the dynamic that he, he had nothing to lose based on what he was facing. And so uh, it, was, it, it was extremely difficult to set up a, a tight perimeter. And so how do, you, how do you better that? How do you mitigate that? Well, you call in more people. And so that's what we've done throughout the week. And, and, and we've reached out, there are sheriff's offices in this state as far as Edgefield County and Pickens and Greenville. Um, they mobilized quickly in the middle of the night last night. Um, municipal police departments mobilized, Greenville City Police Department, of course, all the ones in York, York County, um, Clover, Fort Mill, Rock Hill, uh, Tiga K, um, Great Falls, Fort Lone, um, all these municipalities, um, along with our federal partners who've been here from day one, um, they all mobilized and we continued to build up that force that we needed. And then yesterday we got a break. Yesterday he ran across, he was seen running across Highway 9, uh, shortly uh, uh, right up from Ligon Road. He crossed the road. He was seen by some of uh, the Chester Sheriff's deputies. And, and we began setting up that perimeter. And at that point, as you know, you know we, we went sometimes 24 to 30 hours with no contact no evidence but we had no evidence that he was not there and so the school of thought is he's in there until you determine by some other evidence that he's not and so uh, what we were able to do is just build up that perimeter and yesterday was the break we were looking for that was his mistake and so we immediately we had numbers and numbers high numbers of uh, law enforcement agencies here we had helicopters that we can mobilize and stay continuous air coverage. And, uh, and we just set up that perimeter. Well, we lost daylight. Um, and so with him being armed, we, we it just wasn't safe. And, and based on his history, it wasn't safe for these officers to be inside the woods, inside the bubble. So we, we reinforced that perimeter. And, and, and my philosophy was we didn't need just a perimeter. We needed layers of a perimeter. And so overnight, we created a perimeter of, of probably 150 to 200 people that surrounded a one to two square mile area. And, and so we developed a plan utilizing uh, tactical teams from various law enforcement agencies, and I'm going to say probably about 10 or 15 uh, state, federal, um, county, and municipal tactical teams and we developed a plan uh, to insert those teams in the bubble to try to, to get some kind of movement. And we called these push teams. And these push teams would go in and literally you would, you would almost step on every square inch of those woods. And during that, um, one of the push teams from the ATF, um, who was here last week, provided a tremendous amount of personnel and then came back today um, right up here behind Jones Hamilton uh, on the power line he was found there and he was laid down and they were able to secure him quickly uh, he did not have a weapon on his person but fortunately we were able to recover a weapon within the uh, 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 proximity of his of his person did he, he say anything? Down was he laying down to surrender or was he dehydrated? Did he pass out? No, he was still conscious. Uh, I believe he was certainly ready to run, but he was just, he was surrounded and he had nowhere to go. Now, did he say anything the, the at all? Line, is that a building or road? No, the, the, the power line, so the electrical power grid 
they are usually in very straight lines and they're well defined and so those are open spaces that that you can you can see things a lot clearer did he say anything um, he, he spoke very well here um, you know obviously he was he was uh, he was tired thirsty and, and I spoke to him and asked him if he was okay you know he's, he's all cut up he's got bug bites his clothes are torn um, you know, he, he's exhausted uh, but we we've been providing him Gatorade the EMS uh, personnel went over and checked on him and um, he's talking he's fine did you tell us any specifics about what he was saying just about his well-being. We were just concerned about his health at that point. Um, you know, he, he's in custody, and no need to interview him at that point. Um, you know, we'll, we'll get him to the office and and, uh, and and see where we need to go from there. Did he, did he surrender the peacefully, or did he put up some type of fight? No, it was peace. It was peaceful. Yes, and I, I can't tell you the specifics because I don't know. But um, there's been no indication that that he fought. He, he tried to flee. I think they saw him and, and, and they got got on him immediately. He was already on the ground at that moment. He was, he, he was, he was laying on the ground because he was hiding. He was hiding in, in the high weeds. Okay. Yes. Did he and, say anything? I, I don't know what he said right there on scene, but I can just tell you what I heard him say on the on the back of the truck and, and it was just answers to my questions about his well being. Now as far as you guys I mean you've talked to us for the last week saying this is exactly the outcome that you wanted. You wanted it to be safe, you wanted officers and people to be safe but also Terry. Tell me how you're feeling that, that actually got accomplished. I, I'm just so proud. I, I'm I'm proud not not my pride. I'm proud for these men and women who who've who've sacrificed they um, there, there are people up there who haven't seen their, their wives or their children all week. And, and, and they've put themselves on the line. They've sacrificed their own lives to keep Chester County safe. And, you know, and I told you early on, it's my responsibility. Chester County elected me to ensure that they have the best safety possible. And, and I'm committed to that. And, and I'm, I'm fortunate to have resources like that and relationships like that 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 don't mind coming here and and really just just doing a full court press i know it's always a team effort but can you tell us what agency actually found him the atf yep it was the atf now is that atf like charlotte or because i know ATF. Charlotte. they're they're from all over uh these are men and women who you know i think i told you the other day they, they flew people from as far as houston jacksonville so it's it's a team that is uh, comprised of people that, that are from all over the country. Sheriff, what's your message to the community right now? You know that all of that he's been captured, and I know a lot of people have sent in tips about his whereabouts. What do you have to say? To the so I have several things. Number one, I want to I want to thank the community for the patience. I know there's been an, it, there, there's been a lot of uh, high anxiety, um, frustration, uh, maybe even doubt that that we were going to. Uh, come through and, and I understand all that because I had those same questions um, but but I, I, I hope this has validated to the community what our commitment is uh, when we have somebody like this uh, we're gonna we're gonna do all that we can um, my other my other appreciation goes to the community for for helping us um, everyone Folks, you have been listening to a, a, a proud sheriff there in Chester County, South Carolina, um, after uh, giving an update to the arrest of Tyler Terry. That all happening in the last hour. Terry on the run for the better part of the past week. I want to give you a, a quick recap of, of the situation. Tyler Terry wanted for at least four murders in two states. Two in St. Louis, Missouri, one in Chester County, one in York County. He's also facing an attempted murder charge for firing on deputies during that vehicle chase that ensued uh, in, and then led to his uh, escape and being on the run. And so much for people they don't even know. Sheriff, can you talk more about Tyler Terry's uh, past with homelessness and how he was able to survive in the woods for a week? I, I don't have a whole lot of information about that. All I can say is... Um, it, during the course of the criminal investigation, we learned that, that he, he was homeless um, at some periods of his life. And so um, it, it, it came to be that he would live in the woods. I think uh, Adrian would, would live with him um, for as long as a month at a time. Uh, they would camp in a tent. I don't know where that happened. Um, I don't know 
what other supplies they had. Um, but and that's why I alluded to that the other day that we we've, we have information that he may have a little more uh, experience with living in the woods. Yeah, can you tell us? the back of that vehicle that uh, Perry was riding in when he was captured and brought back to this area? I'm sorry, say again. Were you on the back of that vehicle? That I was not. I was not. I was at the command post, and that's where I've stayed most of the time with the, the command team. Uh, this is a unified command system employing the uh, incident command system, and so uh, no need for all the leaders to be downrange. You put the, the people who are actually doing all the work and the, the decisions are made up here the, at the command you. level. Can I tell us the difficulty, as far as this rural area, how is it difficult to find a person like that, especially with so, so well experienced? Well, we're, we're, we're talking about an area of, of thousands of acres. And, and what, so we're not just talking about a, a large area, but we're talking about an area that had uh, a lot of tree growth. And so it was difficult for us to utilize some of the technology from the air because of that, that canopy that those trees provided. Um, and, and uh, you know, the terrain with it being dry, I understand that that's not the best conditions for, uh, for tracking people, from, for man tracking um, with the dogs, or it makes it difficult, a little more difficult. Um, the terrain, and of course, the heat. Um, I, I know we're, we haven't gotten into the really hot days of July and August, but it's still hot, and especially when you're wearing all that gear, you're trying to stay hydrated, it's, it's difficult. You talked about um, how social media helped and got the message out. Did it hinder in any particular way? Thank you. Um, it did, and, and I'll tell you probably a couple nights ago it, it became a little overwhelming. Um, there were a number of tips that were coming in of people saying, I saw him, um, but that wasn't necessarily verified. Um, it's our responsibility. We still have to run those down, and but it takes away from where we feel we should concentrate our efforts. We had we had confidence that he was within our bubble, and he was. He was within our bubble the whole time, but we could not ignore those other tips. We had the the, the location on Hernandez. We had to give it credibility. We had one on Highway 21 the other night. Um, those tips came in, but you know, Brian, that's that's a part of police work, and and that's that's just what we have to do. We can't say, um, "Hey, public, tell us tell us information we need to know," and then say, "Well, we only want the good stuff." We have to determine that. And so, again, I thank the public, and I'm not complaining. That's our responsibility, and and, and we'll vet that. I'm I'm glad that it turned out that way. Sheriff, the only thing I wanted to ask is some of us here have been able to talk to his family over the last couple of days. I didn't know if you guys throughout this had any communication with his parents, his family, his relatives, and did they assist you in any way during this? Well, uh, they communicated with us. Um, everybody uh, in his in his uh, circle, family, uh, friends, we made a lot of contacts with them. Um, SLED, the FBI, the Marshal Service, uh, they helped us on uh, the family in Ohio, in Charleston, uh, I believe there may have been somebody in Columbia. But you remember I told you uh, we, we were working a fugitive investigation parallel to us working this man, tracking him in the woods. And so uh, the family, it, honestly, everybody that we, we talked with was cooperative and, and wanted this thing to end peacefully. And they wanted to do all that they could, but he didn't have a phone. Uh, he had no access. He was within our perimeter, and so um, there was really nothing that they could do as long as he was within the bubble. Sheriff, will he be charged here in South Carolina first, or will he be sent back to Missouri? He's charged in South Carolina first. He'll have to deal with his, his charges here first. Um, he has a number of those uh, uh, murder, attempted murder here just in Chester County. Of course, he has uh, the, the charges in, in York City, and... Um, and, and some other things, and of course we got we got a lot of work to do still, and um, we'll 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 keep working it. The criminal investigation, again, it's never stopped. It's never let up, and really, it's going to do nothing but. Um,
become am more amplified. Yes, ma'am. Sheriff, this may be too far ahead, but are you going to make the officers who captured him available to speak with media at some point? We'll have, we'll have to talk about that. Okay. Yeah. And what's next for Terry? I know he's been, um, he's being checked out by EMS. Talk about what's next. So, so he's on the way to the Chester County Detention Center. He'll he'll go through a booking process. Uh, we actually uh, maintain our, our COVID quarantine uh, protocol. So he'll be quarantined, I believe it's 10 or 12 days. And um, so he'll be isolated and he'll, he'll, he'll be taken care of just like all the other men and women at our detention facility. I know arrest warrants kind of alluded to Adrian Simpson helping you guys kind of put some pieces together. Can you tell us a little bit about that at all? No, ma'am. I, I don't want to talk about that right now. And how are the officers doing? The, the officers uh, just received a shot of adrenaline in their arm. They're, they're uh, you know, they have, uh, they carried this this weight as well. You know, they're they're actually the ones that have been in the woods. Um, they, they've been committed to this operation the whole time. And, you know, yes, y'all have been talking to me and I, I think you can kind of understand my anxiety and my frustration, but it, it, it was 10 times worse on them because they were actually in there dealing with the physical part. Um, they're running around in the woods with an armed murderer. Can you tell us a little bit about how they felt seeing him on the back of that truck being, you know, c coming up to the place that you guys have been staged at for a week now? Yeah, I, I, they were just proud. They were proud. Uh, I hope you were able to see everybody high-fiving and hugging one another and, 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 and you couldn't hear it, but you know what they were telling one another? They were telling one another that they love them. How does that make you feel as, as, you know, I know you're at the top of this. How does that make yeah. you feel hearing all that? Well, extremely proud and, and it's because and you've heard me say this time and time again here at the Chester Sheriff's Office, um, my goal has been to change the culture. Um, and, and you can do that by changing the hearts and minds of your men by certainly setting the example. And, and I'm responsible for that, setting that tone. Um, but we've got, we've, got a great, we've got a great agency. We've got a great county. And, and, and I said on May the 8th, 2019, on my first swearing in, um, I don't want anybody to look down their noses at Chester County. Was there any any time during this whole thing, I know it's a bit early for reflection, where something surprised you, where something set you back on the heels a bit, you thought, I never would have thought of that? <laughs> um, Brian, I would say probably, it, it, was, it was before we got the video of Carolina Earth Movers, um, I would have I would have probably staked the house on him not being here. Uh, I, re I really I, I was very down, discouraged, and um, and, and you know it, it just it just worked out. The good Lord was looking out for all of us, and um, and, and it just it just worked out. And, and it again it was because of the determination, the tenacity of everybody over there. Sheriff, other than the cases we are aware of, are there any other cases? cases you may suspect that uh, Tyler and Terry is involved in? Well, that's where we've got to go to work. Um, you know, there, there are a lot of voids in, in where he and Adrian were um, between South Carolina and uh, St. Louis. You know, it's a long ways between here and there, and so we've got a lot of work to do. Uh, luckily, we've got the help of our federal partners who've been tied in with us from day one. Um, we've been, the, the FBI has been reaching out to those, those states in between, and, and so We've got, it. We've got a great footprint already in place. Um, and so we're just going to continue working. You know, it's our responsibility. And I, and I told everybody up there, um, it's our role to investigate the case, um, bring it before a judge, secure uh, a, a criminal process, which is the warrant. Um, and it's our job to go and, and serve that warrant to capture that individual. That's law enforcement's role. Um, we don't. We don't set bonds, we don't uh, sentence them, we don't find them guilty. Our role is to do just what I said. And so law enforcement did their role. We did our job um, and we did it safely, we did it professionally, without the loss of life. And, and, and again, I'm proud to say without a one shot fired. Now I can't say that about him. And unfortunately he fired too many shots and, 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 and he'll, have to, he'll have to deal with that in the court system. But law enforcement, did a great job. They did their job this week, the just like they do on a regular basis. And are the roads back open? People are asking. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Roads will be back open. What sure. are you going to do next? 
Uh, we have a lot to demobilize over here. Um, I want to thank the community. The community uh, has been amazing. And when I say the community, I'm talking about the whole region. We've had people from Columbia and York County, I think maybe even Charlotte, people would just pull up over here and drop off food and, and, and water and Gatorade and all. Uh, so all that stuff you see has been donated. Um, Hungry Heroes, Amanda Riggins, her, her, her organization, she's fed us like four or five times. Um, so she's an amazing person in her organization, and so I'd really ask people to support her. Um, and this school, this school, um, this school has uh, become our home, and, and we just kind of took over it. So uh, Principal Tammy Snipes, she has accommodated us in, in so many ways. We had officers uh, camping out in the library over the weekend in the cool. They've provided us ice. They've given us access to the press box. You know, this is really the perfect staging area. We can land helicopters here and everything else. So um, I, I'm, just, I'm just so proud of this community. And, um, and, and so we're going to keep it up, Chester. We're going to, uh, this is what you should expect from your sh sheriff's office. Are we going to get it right all the time? No. Are we going to make mistakes? Yes. Um, but this is the standard that we want, not just me, the entire agency. And, 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 and I'm, I'm fortunate to know that I've got uh, partners like that over there. Here's sure. my last question to you. Do you know if the school had to go on lockdown today? The, the school uh, placed themselves on lockout, okay. which is, is, a, is a lesser lockdown. Uh, but uh, w when it comes to the safety of this school, and I've been asked this a lot, you know, I've, I've had people say, I can't believe you're allowing the school to be open. It can't be safe. Both of my children go to this school. So if I had any concern about the safety and well-being of anybody in this school, that's my priority right there. And so please, please, the public needs to know that. I never had a doubt about the safety and security of, of this entire complex. I mean, just look at the law enforcement presence at the school. Correct. Sheriff, you going to get some sleep tonight? I promise you I'm going to get some sleep. <laughs> Good job. All right. Hey, Thanks, thank you. Yes, yes. Question. Uh, did they have body cams on and did we have possible access to that? There is some body cam footage. Um, I, I'll have to look into that. I'll have to look into that. Um, I know it's part of the investigation, yes. but l just remind me, follow up with me on okay. that. One more question, um, and you may have said it. I apologize, but did, was there any evidence that anyone was helping him at all or he was just... No, ma'am. We, we have no evidence of that. Okay, thank you all very much. Thank you. Appreciate it.
We continue to follow breaking news right now. A week long search for a murder suspect in Chester County finally coming to an end. Hundreds of officers assisting in boxing in Tyler Terley in the woods in the Richburg area. Officers were able to bring him in just after 10 this morning. WCNC Charlotte's Billie Jean Shaw has been on the story from the very beginning. She's live now in Chester County. Billie Jean, the sheriff just wrapping up a, an update a few minutes ago. Uh, it sounds like this is the end they've been hoping for. They got him. They got him in custody and they did so safely. They did so safely. No shots were fired. No officers were harmed. And Tyler Terry was not harmed either. The sheriff uh, of Chester County, Max Dorsey, just finished wrapping up uh, and walking us through what this cat, the details of this capture. Tyler Terry was captured around 1030 this morning. I'm hoping back there in the booth you guys can pull up those pictures that I just tweeted. You can see him sitting on the back of law enforcement's truck. His clothes were torn. Uh, they were actually giving him water. Keep in mind, Tyler Terry, 26 year old murder suspect, had been on the run for a week in the woods here in, uh, in the Chester County area uh, in Richburg. And it, again, take a look at those pics. We just got those uh, pictures from the sheriff's office. You see Tyler Terry there sitting on the back of the truck. This is just moments after he was captured at 1030 this morning. Uh, the sheriff said that Tyler Terry was actually hiding behind a local plant in the perimeter of Highway 9 and Richburg Road. If you remember, he was cited by a police officer yesterday afternoon in broad daylight around 230. They saw him walking near Legion Road, and that is when an officer attempted to chase him. Uh, they got near a church. It happened for about a mile, and that's when uh, Tyler Terry ran back into the woods. And the the reasoning for not sending an officer behind him was that officer was by himself. It was a safety concern. The sheriff says what he did not want to happen was any of his officers, any of the law enforcement agencies uh, that are here from across the state to get harm. Because keep in mind, this is a very rural area. When you're talking about Chester County, you're talking about what we will call the country, woods, dirt roads. There are no street lights. There are no city lights. It's not anything like Charlotte. So when nightfall happens, it is pitch black. And so what the sheriff says to their strategy was after seeing Tyler Terry, they had officers to surround that entire perimeter. They know that he ran in and they know that one thing was for sure. He was not going to be able to run back out. And that is what led them to his capture today after a week long manhunt. I want to go right now to some sound from Sheriff Max Dorsey. This is what he said moments ago as the, to the condition of Tyler Terry when he was caught. He was tired, thirsty. And, and I spoke to him and asked him if he was okay. You know, he's, he's all cut up. He's got bug bites. His clothes are torn. Um, you know, he, he's exhausted. Uh, but we, we've been providing him Gatorade. The EMS uh, personnel went over and checked on him. And um, he's talking. He's fine. Yeah, and again, I want to go back to those pictures. You heard the sheriff say that they provided, you know, uh, emergency uh, care for Tyler Terry. You can see him on the back of the pickup truck uh, uh, getting Gatorade. Um, one of the things that was interesting about all of this, uh, the sheriff said that, you know, that was important for them to do. Of course, he says they are not the judge or the jury. It was their one job was to capture this man, bring him into custody, and that's what they've been trying to do for the past week. And if you are not too familiar with this story, let me just walk you through the timeline. All of this started Monday night around 11 o'clock. If you're familiar with 77, you ever jumped off of exit 65 in Richburg, there's a Bojangles right there. Well, Tyler Terry and his girlfriend, Adrian Simpson, were parked there at that Bojangles restaurant. Uh, it was again 11 o'clock. Deputies thought that was a little suspicious for someone to be parked there that late when the restaurant was closed. When they attempted to pull over that car to see what was going on, that's when deputies say Adrian Simpson sped off, and that's when Tyler Tyler Terry started shooting from the passenger side of the car. They actually led deputies on a 20 to 30 mile high speed chase all the way down through York County back up to Chester near Louisville High School. And that's where we are set up right now. That is the, uh, con the command post right here where you see law enforcement. And from there, that's when Adrian Simpson was arrested and she gave up Tyler Terry's name to authorities. Tyler Terry then ran off to the woods, never to be heard or seen from again up until Wednesday night. That is 
is when uh, he was captured on surveillance video at a local store in the Fort Lawn area attempting to steal a utility truck, a.k.a. a small golf cart that goes about 50 miles per hour. He got near 77, ditched that truck. We we're also told he stole clothes, snacks, and a, a loaded gun at that time as well. So at that point, deputies knew one thing was for sure, that Tyler Terry was armed, and they knew he was in the woods, and they knew this was a rural area that they did not need to send officers in blindsided, not knowing what he will do, considering his past of uh, all these murder charges that he is accused, that he is facing now, and murder, which he is accused of. And so from there... The days have gone by. There were some people saying that they saw Terry. Um, there were not confirmed sightings by deputies. All of that changed around 2.40 yesterday afternoon in broad daylight. That is when a deputy that was on standby, his job was to make sure that he watched out to see if Tyler Terry was anywhere around the area. And guess what? The sheriff says it was a mistake on Tyler Terry's part. He ended up running across Legion Road. And when he did that, he went into the woods uh, after being chased by that deputy. Again, it was not safe for that deputy to go behind him because he was the only one at the moment. And that's when they set up shop, set up that perimeter and found him around 1030 this morning, hiding behind a local plant near a power grid, hiding behind high weeds. He was laying down. Uh, the sheriff says he didn't put up a fight. He was on. He didn't necessarily have the gun directly on him, but they did find a gun in that area. Now, another big question you may be wondering, how is a 26-year-old man with a criminal past uh, known to uh, possibly murder people not only in South Carolina and in St. Louis, Missouri, able to survive? and hide out in the woods for seven days straight? Well, the answer to that is simple. The sheriff says that Tyler Terry and his girlfriend, Adrian Simpson, all they both have had a history of living in the woods. They both were homeless at one point, and they lived in the woods. They camped out. Uh, the sheriff didn't know specifically which woods uh, they lived in, but he he knows about a month at a time they were living out in the wilderness. Wilderness, And I did speak to a family member uh, super quick just now that said at one point they were living uh, in the woods in Salisbury, North Carolina. Um, earlier the, today, you know, I spoke to Adrian Simpson's mom. She actually lived with Adrian and Tyler for a week uh, just earlier this year uh, in Myrtle Beach. She said Tyler Terry had horrible anger issues. She also tells me that he beat her daughter to the point where she lost sight in one eye. She lost hearing in the other. She says that Tyler Terry threatened to shoot her one time simply because she asked him to take out the trash when they were living together and he destroyed her truck as well. I'm going to post those pictures of the incident she's referring to on my Twitter feed, Billy Jean TV, so you can see that as well. But again, that just gives us more context to who this 26 year old murder suspect is, Tyler Terry, but the good news is Tyler Terry is now in custody, headed to the Chester County Detention Center after being on the run for seven days. No one is harmed, no officers are harmed, and Tyler Terry is not harmed either. Ben, I'll send it back to you. I know folks there in Chester County are uh, going to be uh, sleeping a little easier tonight knowing that he is in custody, and, and kudos to all those law enforcement officers. We know hundreds uh, helping out in, in this search. Billy Jean, thanks. There's a lot of the stories you can probably tell. We've got it all for you right now in this WCNC mobile app. Right now, temperatures on the rise and are going to stay going up throughout the week. Let's get it over to Larry Sprinkle with the latest. No doubt about it. We're right in the middle of that first heat wave of 2021. Take a look at Rock Hill, South Carolina from our Mr. Sparky Carolina Camera Network. Nice view down there. Just a few fair weather clouds out there. 86 in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Notice Chira, South Carolina already at the 90 degree mark. 78 at Boone, 83 at Hickory over at Almeron, Stanley County. There at 86 there, 87 once again in the Queen City. Here we go. It's been a Above average, way above average yesterday, and here we go right through most of the rest of this week. Temperatures averaging anywhere from about may almost 10 degrees above average in many spots. So there wouldn't be surprised. We could see definitely some temperatures Thursday in the mid 90s. First one Doppler radar. High pressure still right on top of us. All the active weather, all the showers and storms well to the north of us. For today, hour by hour, it's going to be hot. A little more humid today, progressively more humid every day this week. We'll be around 92 degrees around 6 p.m. 10 p.m. temperature temperature tonight still in the low 80s, mid 70s right there at midnight. So the heat wave is here. Hot weather for the next several days. Big changes for the upcoming Memorial Day weekend. A cool down the way, but with that does come a chance of 
some of the much needed rain. We'll check all that and check the timeline coming up in just a few minutes. Looking forward to it, Larry. Thank you. This afternoon, police asking for your help to find a missing.